From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Monday. I hope you had a good weekend. We're getting things up and rolling this morning. It's going to be a busy, busy day, and uh, we've got a good show, as always, on tap for you. I mean, as things have opened up now with regard to the pandemic, and gosh, this past weekend, as you saw going on downtown, of course, with the Predators hosting a game and the sounds here behind the station playing and the crowds coming out and the second and broad coming alive, um, you know, things are slowly but surely getting back to normal. And I say slowly, I think it's happening pretty quickly, and it's fantastic to see. But here's the thing is every Everything starts reopening to a degree. There is a real issue, and you've seen the stories. We've done some. There's some national media reports, but here in Nashville, especially, a shortage of available workers. As these businesses get up and running again, a lot of them are having trouble finding the employees they need to do business and to serve and to the service industry, of course, other businesses as well. A lot of folks still uh, may be collecting unemployment, though that's going to change uh, to some degree how much they collect um, with change here at the governor's level so we're going to talk about just the issue here with regard to the workforce and what it means if it doesn't get up and running butch spirit in here with the city of course you know the visitors bureau and all of that talks about how hospitality and hosting is a big big part of what this city is known for and what we draw to the city and why people come and if that's not up to par that's going to be a problem and how long will it take it's too early maybe to get severely concerned about this, but I know help wanted signs everywhere. Employers are offering more to get good employees to keep you so you can make more money. But with the shortage of this also, you as a consumer are going to find prices going up. It's just the way it is. They got to pay more. You're going to have to pay more. So let's get into that this morning. Um, we've got a professor from TSU joining us, professor of economics and finance. Achintia Ray is with us this morning. Good morning, Professor Ray. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Listen, so I, I, I'll tell you what, I've been out and about and things are coming alive now, but um, there's help wanted signs everywhere. And I, I'm just curious, as you observe from your point of view, is it a slow process where it gets back to where the employers can find the workers they need? Is this natural or should there be a little bit of a concern, especially in a city like Nashville that is so known for its service industry and hospitality? It's a great question. I, I think that's the question on everybody's mind now. Um, so uh, the answer to that question is unfortunately multi-layered. There yeah. is no straightforward answer. In some cases, yes, things will probably get back to normal sooner or later. Um, those could be the transitory component. But in the longer run, there are structural issues in the job market. And uh, there are we, are we are not only seeing a labor shortage in some areas, but we are severely um, uh, understaffed in terms of the skilled labor. Yeah. I think when we talk about the national labor shortage, it is the skilled labor component that we are most concerned about. Hmm. And uh, those are going to take a much longer period of time and would reco um, require significant policy interventions, both in Nashville and everywhere else in the nation. Well, give me an example, like when you talk about skilled labor, what kind of jobs are you talking about with skilled labor as opposed to maybe a service industry job where someone is a host or hostess at a restaurant or working in a fast food place? Um, I was just doing some uh, search on our local jobs for tn.gov website and if you look at uh, different jobs you will find jobs like uh, programmers okay coding people mathematical professions truck drivers nursing people teachers um, which require significant amount of education and training and those things do not happen overnight you cannot prepare a nurse just in a matter of weeks so those are skilled jobs and that shortage, the shortage of skilled labor, is not really a pandemic issue. It has been going on for many, many years, in decades. And what is happening right now, part of the reason uh, is pandemic, because you know, a lot of people are still 
extremely concerned about um, the ongoing health situation. They may not be uh, willing to come back to their job. But we also have a demographic change that is happening at the, at the same time. Don't forget that many of the skilled profession people may be baby boomers mm -hmm. who are retiring in large numbers. And the time that will take to replace those people is considerable amount of time. And that would need a different kind of thinking. So just to give you an example, some time back, there was a study that done by PBS. They looked at the uh, total amount of apprentices, say for an example, like electricians or plumbers who, um, who need apprenticeship jobs. So there were well under 1 million apprenticeships, I think 630,000, if I'm not uh, mistaken, mm -hmm. as opposed to over 12 million people who are going to college and getting a college degree. So if you look at the, um, the wages and salaries and power hour rate for some of those craft job, trade jobs, those are significant. And in some cases, they may be more than some of the white collar jobs that we talk about. But we do have a mismatch both locally, regionally, and nationally in terms of the skilled labor. And that's what gets everybody concerned. But uh, I'll be happy to talk yeah. about why that is the case beyond uh, the usual uh, suspects. Yeah, exactly. So, because I mean, what you described there, I think, is becoming more apparent now. Um, but that was an issue before the pandemic. I mean, we, I heard those kind of complaints before. And, and we can talk more about that. You're right, especially we have Oracle, we, you know, and those are supposed to be some high paying, more tech jobs coming. We've got Amazon, obviously. Just with regard, I wanna ask you though, just with regard to some of the service industry jobs, which is not specifically what you're talking about there, but those are slowly, slow to come back right now um, with regard to the pandemic. And I'm wondering if these two factors play into it. One. You know, if you're going to work in some kind of establishment in the city here, you can't afford to live here working at one of those on those wages. That's a, that's a pickle. And second, I'm wondering, is there any segment of the population out there that maybe has been collecting unemployment? And frankly, at some point there, the unemployment levels were where they were making about as much through unemployment as they were at their job, where maybe they've been hesitant to come back. And now we know the governor here in Tennessee is saying no more of the federal dollars. We go back to state unemployment, which in my opinion is a piddling amount of less than $300 a week. And that's going to maybe drive people to say, well, I can't live on this now. I have to go back. So is unemployment an issue there? And what about, you know, the ability to get workers to work downtown when they can't live here? I think those are excellent points. And, um, and the answer to um, your concerns may be all of the above to some extent. Um, so basically, let me take them uh, in in, in order. So first one is the affordability concern. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nashville has become a, an extremely costly city to leave. Um, and that is a concern for all sections of the society. And it is, it, is, it is impossible to find a good house at a reasonable price these days. Even the rents are going up, which is what you are going to expect in a growing city. Um, plus, you know, affordability can also get affected by not only the demand supply factor, but also other factors, for an example, property taxation. And that uh, those increased property taxations and also through valuation can be filtered down in higher cost of living, depressing the affordability. So you're absolutely right. Those, those are some of the issues that are not going to go away any time in, um, in, in near future. The second part of the, of the concern that you uh, expressed is um, the unemployment benefit. In addition to the state unemployment benefit, there is a federal component, which we are talking about. Um, yes, that, that component is probably um, is significant amount for some of the jobs. Uh, definitely people who are making uh, like $15 an hour or less, yeah. there could be some kind of a replacement because I think the federal unemployment is something like $300 per week uh, 
correct? Uh, that's the that's the amount. Right. So three hundred dollars, you know, forty hours. That's like seven fifty right there. Mm -hmm. So on the top of that, there is a state component. Uh, I think about a year back, the amount was even higher. I think it was 600, yeah. right? At some point of time towards the beginning of the pandemic, that itself was $15 an hour, just a little over a year sure. ago. So I don't I don't want to second guess about uh, whether or not those uh, enhanced amount are uh, appropriate or not. In some cases, they might have been, they might have cushioned a little bit uh, the pandemic downturn, but for some, sections of the workforce people who are in that hourly wage rate um, there is there is this concern that this additional amount of payment could be um, depressing some of the labor supply but while we are at at the issue of discussing the cost don't forget child care also okay listen I, I mean it is not let's talk about child yeah because I was gonna bring that up also the child care issue and then also what employers may have to do to get the workers they need. We gotta take a break on that note, uh, Professor. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll pick up on that thought where you were right then. If anyone has a question or comment about that, if you're out there and you're working now, um, call us, I'd like to hear about that if you've gone back to work. If not, and you haven't yet, and you're looking for a job or your situation, I'd like to hear from you. There are some people out there I know who wanna get back to work, but maybe where they work, say in the music industry and elsewhere, hasn't totally gotten back up and running yet. But others, you know, hey, there's jobs out there. I mean, when someone says, I can't find work, uh, you may not be able to find the type of job that you exactly want or that pays, but there's work out there. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more with the professor right after this.